Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and this is Canuck Runner's Chevrolet Cab Over Ramp Truck, and it is one of the coolest things to ever come to SnowRunner because it's a ramp truck. Now, I have a little bit of an obsession with ramp trucks, probably because you never see them anymore, but no matter what chassis they're built on, no matter what era they're from, I always end up gravitating towards them for some reason. I love the cool factor. I love how they represent a little bit of an era that we really don't see anymore. And I love seeing modern cars being hauled around on restored classic ramp trucks. I think it's one of the coolest things that you could see driving around on the road. But enough rambling on about it in the garage. Let's customize it and then we'll of course get it out on the road and see how it hauls and how it drives out here on the highway hauling region. So let's jump into the customization first. Now, engine wise, you have the Loadmaster inline 6 which starts out at a B plus power to weight rating and then of course you have the L Loadmaster inline 6 tuned which brings you up to an A plus. We're definitely going to want that. Now, gearbox, we have the HD 6 speed highway, the off road 5 speed and the stock 4 speed. Since we're on highway hauling the region, we're going to go with the HD 6 speed for sure. Now, suspension wise, we have active haul and we have raised. The raised one will obviously give us access to taller tires, in this case, a 36 inch tire, or you can have the active one, which will basically allow you to fit a 34 inch tire, but you can raise and lower the suspension up and down. I'm going to go with the. I'm going to go with the active one, actually. I feel like that might be a little bit better. So we have a 34-inch all-terrain, a 34-inch off-road, and a 34-inch chained tire should you want to use this truck in a snowy or icy environment. So we're actually going to go with the uh, the PT42 Fenrir Duels, which, once again, I know they're an off-road tire, but they do still have a good on-road rating, so they should be fine to use out here on the highway hauling region. Now, winch-wise, powerful offline winch, absolutely going for that. Snorkel-wise, I'm thinking, uh, eh, I'm not really, honestly, I'm not really going to worry about the snorkel because, again, we're running around out here on a highway map, so I don't really think we need to worry about it. Now, we have a round beacon, we have a flasher bar, we have, let's see, external horn, external horns, multiple. Um, I'm going to throw those up top just because they're kind of cool. Angled sun visor, absolutely. Front bumper, we got the angled. Actually, that's the Apache bumper. We've also got a heavy-duty pipe bumper, which is super over the top, but I actually really like the sort of look and aesthetic feel of the stock front bumper. Now, the exhaust, we have the outrolled, and we have flap cap, and we have stock. The stock is probably basically like basically probably a dump pipe underneath the thing, but I think we're going to go with the outrolled. I think that looks pretty sick. Now, let's see. Oh, dark and light wheels. Huh. I'll go with the darker ones, but that's really, really cool. Oh, that looks so good in red, but it also looks so good in orange and yellow. Oh, man. These, like, the brighter colors actually look great on these classic designs. Really, really good. I actually really like the light blue. It looks good in white as well. Let's see what other colors they have. I really like the purple. Is that bad that I really, really, really like the purple? Oh, man. I think the purple really complements it, actually. But so does the light blue. I think I'll go with the light blue. Now, bobbleheads-wise, we're absolutely throwing beans on the dash. And as far as accessories go, I mean, you have your standard assortment of accessories. But we're not really going to put anything up there for right now. We just want beans in there. And then exterior stickers-wise, whoa! It actually goes on the back of the actual ramp platform. That's so cool. Dude, you can do them on both sides. Oh, I love that. That is really creative and really cool. Mad props for that. Okay. Whoa. All right. It's the middle of the night. Let's hold on. Afternoon. And also, we're going to have to... I'm going to have to figure out where that... Okay, there it is. I'm going to stop tracking that contract just so we don't have to worry about it. And now, we can fire this guy up and see not only what it's like to drive, but what it's like to load up some vehicles on it. Now, as you can tell, the game is still attempting to load a bunch of things in, judging by the frame rate that we're seeing. But I'm about to just go ahead and delete that trailer because it's kind of in the way. Um, and the nice thing about playing around in single player is that you can do that. So as we make our way over here, one of these is going to have to get towed somewhere, or rather ramp trucked somewhere. And I don't know why the uh, Defender is very broken, but I'm going to see if I can switch to it real quick. And, and now it's magically not broken anymore. Would you look at that? All right, let's bring you back over here and shut you down. 
And now I'm going to switch over to the Bronco because, funny enough, the Bronco actually perfectly matches the color of the ramp truck. What's also really cool about that ramp truck is the fact that, as you can see right there on the back, it has a trailer hitch. So you can actually haul, pull behind trailers um, behind the truck itself. And should the vehicle be uh, non-functional, you can actually haul it up onto the ramp truck itself with the winch. Now, let's see. We're actually pushing the ramp truck, probably because of the fact that the parking brake is off but let's see change suspension mode hey that's sick okay now since the parking brake is on let me switch into the bronco now and see if it'll let me actually drive up okay yeah that was really easy like really really easy dude dude that fits it fits so well actually all right let's shut it down now, this bronco has been a little tricky a little finicky about packing so let's see oh easy Packs, no problem at all. Look at that! Y'all, look at that! That's like a proper, true ramp truck that actually works. If you want a efficient, quick way to get your vehicles around a map or around a gameplay scenario, this guy right here is absolutely the way to do it. Absolutely, 100% the way to do it. And I love this old school interior. It's fairly, I am driving off the road. Let's not do that. But I love this old school styled interior. Like it's nothing fancy, it's nothing crazy. It doesn't have anything over the top, but it does everything you need and nothing you don't. And plus, I love that old school wood grain steering wheel with like the the, like the shiny metal inlays in the middle so good you can see the gear stick kind of moving around down there that's awesome god what a cool thing to see going down the road what a cool thing to see going down the road and not only what a cool thing to see going down the road but what a cool way to add to the role play dynamics of snow runner you could role play out so many scenarios with this ramp truck, whether that be maybe it's your personal ramp truck and you're using it to take your vehicle to the off-road park, or maybe you use it for your, your virtual role-played business. Maybe it's a like a business vehicle for you. Maybe you use it to actually go pick up and deliver vehicles around a map for your clients. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter how you use this truck, it is absolutely going to be one of the coolest role-playing trucks that you basically basically could ever have across the course of this game. So incredibly cool. So incredibly freaking cool. Now, let's actually take this guy up here to the gas station. I'm gonna drop him off real quick. And easy does it. We're gonna make our way right in here to the gas station. And I'm gonna unload it right here in one of these parking spaces. Nice and simple. Let's back you up. Back, back, back. I said back. Back or not. I was like, back or not back, either way, uh, that's close enough. All right, unpack, swap, let's go. All right, so let's ease you back into the parking space and shut you down and change back into the cab over ramp truck and recover back to the garage. Now we're going to switch up the setup on it a little bit. So let's go from active haul to raised suspension and let's go with some big boy 36 inch tires. And now let's leave the garage again and see if it's basically a um, absolute pain to get something up onto the back of this thing, or if it's still like a doable thing, a doable scenario. So let's stop you right there. Now vehicles, let's see, classic crew, where's my classic crew? And so it's out there, there's my IX 5003 chilling out up there, there's my discotheque, and let's grab the, let's grab the classic crew, because I wonder if the classic crew will fit on the back of the ramp truck, because the classic crew is fairly long. It's not the longest this wheelbase could be, but it is still a fairly long truck. Now, the other thing, too, is that approach angle has been made a lot higher, so, oh, this thing is wide, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. It doesn't like it. I'll tell you right now, it doesn't like it. Yeah, if you're going to be hauling a lot with that truck, I definitely don't recommend running the lift. Because uh, if you're running the lift, yeah, you're going to you're gonna run into this scenario a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot, a lot. All right, swap over to the cab over ramp truck again. And we're going to recover it back to the garage. We're going to put the 34-inch tires back on it. And we're going to put the active haul suspension back on it. That way, it's actually practical and it's actually usable in a day-to-day -day scenario. Now, we could have backed up the lifted one to the loading platform right over there. But personally, I prefer to use this as a vehicle that is lower down and something that you can just 
you know, just pick vehicles up with, something that you just have the ability to drive things up onto the back of it with, that makes so much more sense to me. So let me get this backed up. You know what? Why am I, why am I focusing so much on that? Let me, oh, there we go. And swap over back to the classic crew again. And now it should have no problems getting up there. But my only concern now is the actual length of the classic crew. Because the classic crew is not a, not a short vehicle. Holy moly. Well, it's going to be close. If it packs, it's going to be very impressive. It packs only just... But it packs. I mean, look, the rear tire is hanging over the edge of the ramp truck. Like, that is about the limit of what this ramp truck can handle. So, the cool thing about it is that, like, across the course of this video, what we saw with the Bronco was what I would call the normal usage for this ramp truck. And then what we're seeing here with the Classic Crew is definitely more along the lines of the limit of what I would suggest using this ramp truck for. Now, I do have one more thing I would like to try. It's going to be a bit of an odd test, but at the end of the day, it will show us how willing this thing is to actually keep something on the back. And that is that we are going to hit the... Well, I say hit. We're like we're going to hit a jump or something. We're going to hit the loading platform the same way you would hit a jump. And I will say the thing just whipped itself around like it was literally like going to slide a corner. So that's pretty freaking impressive right off the bat there. But let's see what happens if we treat that loading platform like a jump and see if it actually holds the classic crew on the back or if the classic crew just flops and that's that. All right, trying to keep it in a slightly higher gear. Oh, no! Oh, it won't even make it! It won't even make it. Well, it might. It's fighting for traction. Yeah, when you turn the lockers on and you bump the wheel speed up... Come on! There's fourth gear! Up! I mean, it's still got it on the back. After all that craziness and wackiness, it never let go of the classic crew. So, to be fair, if you're talking about a scenario where you're going to be in all sorts of different situations, and you're not quite sure what the terrain's gonna look like. I mean, after what I just put it through, I would take this thing down some mild to moderate trails with a truck on the back and still not worry about it. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this vehicle, make sure to let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. Let me know if it's something you plan on using. And if you're new around here and would like to see more, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.